Hi Stampin' Friends, I'm Deb Crowley from Deb Staubers in Urbandale, Iowa. I'm happy to be with you this weekend as we learn how to make some new and different things other than just cards with our Stampin' Up! products for the holidays. I'm going to make a shadow box display today and what, I'm, what you're going to need is a shadow box. You can have, I'm using a long rectangular one, I'm using the actual white one of this, but I wanted to show you the one that I use. I got from Michaels. You can usually get them um, on sale with a coupon, 50% off, makes a great deal. A lot of times you use the eight by eight or the nine by nine size and square and could do the same thing. It's just a matter of readjusting the um, sizes of what you're cutting out. So the first thing we need to do to do this is to remove the back. This, this particular one comes with a soft, velvety thing, like if you're using it for a display case, it's all lined, so that, that nice black background. But I found it's much easier in this project to take that off. I'm gonna point this down. To just peel this part off, it's, it's just uh, stuck down, taped down. So that when you're all done, you just have the flat, the flat cardboard. This, this one's coming off a little rougher than my last one did. So right now I'm going to leave it on there. But take that off, scrape off the, the background. And for this project, I'm going to be using the cabin, peaceful cabin suite with the stamps and the die. We have our uh, cabin stamped and cut out. And I wanted to show you that I, I ran out of this nice, beautiful DSP, but this was the background. So if you have a 12 inch sheet of paper, you can take and cut it, cut it to size to fit on the backdrop. I didn't have it, but I had bought the paper pumpkin and it had these lovely cards. And guess what? They're the trees. So they fit really nicely across here. So you can just figure out where it, where they, uh, right about there, they'll match. And you can glue it on to your, your cardboard backing there. And then you're ready to get started. And the other thing that I have pre-prepared are the strips of using shimmery white cardstock. Use strips and... To do this, you can use your dies, and as you're cutting, you can across your board. You add add the the other on there on your paper long ways. Those will both fit, and you can run them through your die cutter. You could even add these pieces in to cut out the trees if you want the holes in the trees. Just slip them all in there, run it through your die cut, and then you've got this longer, longer piece to fit across your frame. And then I also did it with, with uh, the same thing with the one with the little fox. Do the fox and, and add the longer one, and you're all set to go. Just cut them all out that way. I, do, I would suggest leaving a little bit longer edge on the bottom. I didn't do that, and so by the time I got to cutting out the trees, I don't have a lot of space between here and here, so I'm going to have to piecemeal <laughs> with some of, the, um, some of the white underneath to, to layer it a little more. So just leave a little longer piece on the bottom because you can always trim it down, but it's harder to add it back in. Okay, some of the other things you will need for this project, and I'm doing this in two parts, so forgive me if I repeat myself. I will be editing the movie to put it all together. The other thing you will need are some fairy lights, and I've got a package of 10 sets from Amazon for really inexpensive, and there's 10 lights on a string, and they're, they're fun to use and easy to use, so you will need that for your project. So let's get started. In there, so it doesn't really matter, but we will trim this up a little bit as well. 
another little mountain of snow. We're going to put this also on with dimensionals. I may add more later, but for right now I'm just getting them in place. And then once I get my fairy lights in, I may, I may do, need to do some adjusting. So let's move this, let it pop up a little bit right here. Okay, and then we have just some, some other snow. We have another one here, we're just gonna trim it down. To allow it to move over and trim it on the edge. Add some more dimensionals. these up just a little bit because we're getting down towards the end of our just gonna move the trees up a bit this is why I went lightweight on the dimensionals so that I could pull them up easy enough because I want them to be up just a little higher towards the front here yeah like that I can move this one up just a little bit Give it a little more layering look here. So we can put it in there and see what we've got going on so far. Let's see how it's looking in our frame. So, so far so good. I need to do a little work down here. Move this one back down a little bit. And we have another. do this so that it's at the edge and then we'll just make another little mountain ridge in here like this put that in there thank goodness for dimensionals ready to put our little house on there and we do need to dimension it and I think I'm going to double stack with dimensionals which means layer them twice the other thing you can do on these is use the long strip of double-sided dimensional and that um, that would lift it up too a little higher easy enough to work with See if I like this or not. I've not tried this before, so we shall see if I like the, the double height dimensional for my cabin. I think so. Puts it up there nice and uh, bright. So here we have this so far. I'm going to add, let's see. First I'm going to put the fairy lights on it. So. I'm going to wind the fairy lights 
in around in between the mounds of snow. Sometimes you can add them, if you want to add them to the top, turn this on, it'd be easier to see what you're doing. You can add them to the top and have the light shine down, tape them up to the top. I kind of like to make sure to start at the edge and just wrap that around, wrap that around. And we'll use a dimensional or a tape to, to stick that on the back there. And then we can just weave this in and out around our, our mounds of snow. behind the behind the trees and see what that looks like there behind the cabin chuck them chuck them in behind there These are wired, so they're really easy to work with as far as um, tucking them in. I think I might have to work this around behind there. There we go, I have to get it tucked in so that you don't show. If you want to, you can take and tape tape them down. This is probably the trickiest part, is getting them all tucked in underneath so that they shine and yet you can't see the wires on the top. dots will work too and I may get some sticky dots. Try a little little bitty dimensional back here to see if this uh, hold them down okay. One of the small dimensionals back here. Okay, hold it down. There. in and see what we have. We're going to add some trees and stuff to it, but I like to see how it's going as I move along. So here it is so far. Isn't that pretty? And this is a nice, nice night scene. You can add some sprinkles or some ornaments or whatever to your trees. I've got some little itty bitty deer that I'm going to add in there. Um, some some um, fencing, so we'll just keep going. Try and twist that around a little bit to get it to go back instead of fall forward. Okay, now we've got our other little trees. I'm going to use these small dimensionals to kind of place those around like around the house. Smaller pine trees. Tuck that house behind that snow there. Building a scene. 
I remember in uh, elementary school building the little dioramas in the shoe boxes that we had to do and those were so much fun with sticks and grass and just making your little little scene. This is kind of like that only with more sophisticated products. Okay, I'm going to glue this one on I think. Add this one onto the back. Let's add a little fencing here and there. See what that adds to our scene. Working with the shadow box, you've got about an inch worth of depth, which makes it really nice to be able to um, lift these up and give a lot of dimension to it. Do we need any more trees? Let's put one right there. change that one out. I've got a couple different papers there. I'm going to add a little a little deer. I don't remember which Stampin' Up! set these came from. It's one in years past, the Itty Bitty Deer, but if you have any of your um, dies and sets that you can add critters to. Be creative and use your products from years past. Let's see. Let's add him over here. Let's add a little more glitter, a little wink of Stella or trees. just to give it a little more glitter in the light. Okay, I think we're ready to set her in here. I'm going to turn this, um, no, I guess I better tack it on back here. We can tape this down a bit. Maybe I'll just use some dimensionals to tape it down for right now to uh, hold it steady. I find that a uh, tad of Velcro will work really well for holding these on. That way you can pull it off to reinsert a new battery if you need to as well. But just for today's sake, because I don't 
have any quite handy. I'm just going to use the dimensionals to keep it from falling off and I can switch it out later. So then you can reach your, your turn on and off button here. Okay, so here we are. I will turn off the light and see, see how pretty that looks in the dark. Isn't that just lovely? Make a, a lovely gift or a lovely uh, centerpiece or just to hang on, have, have on your um, shelf, your fireplace mantle for a nice evening, Christmassy, wintry scene. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, Enjoy the rest of the, the demonstrations this weekend. Hi friends, I'm back. I just had a brainstorm and wanted to show you what I've done. I added some of this snowflake, buffalo snowflake that I've had in my stash that I think I probably got it like Joann's or something into the shadow box. And uh, look at how that adds a little sparkle, a little more sparkle. I'm all about sparkles. So there you go. I hope you enjoy this project. Have fun.